music is really absurd a lot of the time, and I think that the experimental music I like takes itself not very seriously at all. Improvising, and it can be anything, and it's probably the oldest practice of music there is, and it's really inclusive of everything. The really cool thing about experimental music is that it doesn't have to be liked. Like, you don't have to like something to enjoy it, or being likeable is not uh, in its interests. I'm Annika Moses. I am a music maker based in Bulu. I am a queer cisgendered white woman. I'm involved in the experimental scene. So do lots of improvising, vocal improvising, um, playing with other musicians and collaborative music making. A lot of my practice is also based in um, electronic production. So I've done a lot of sort of radio work in work that's interested in the voice and dialogue and text. Um, but my background is in folk music, so just like writing folk songs and I'm really interested in songwriting. I'm like a bit of a weirdo and freak and like, like freaky things and uh, like if I'm really excited by something, I will often just like laugh at that. Experimental music especially and improvisation is something that very much opens the space for like, you can do anything. You can literally do anything and anyone can do this. <laughs> Ethically or, or politically, I'm often trying to get away from this idea of like virtuosity and mastery and dominance and yeah, individual success that is so, so encouraged and valued in the institutional learning of music. That's a kind of virtuosity. Like people are very well practiced in um, these very, very specific avenues, but also it is a space that welcomes like naivety and amateurism. Intuition is something that like might be viewed as the opposite of virtuosity, but I think is such a valuable really, really valuable thing in music to have. I'm Sage Harlow, but I perform under the name Sage <laughs> spot P B B B T and my performance practice is usually um, an exploration of extended vocal technique so I got really interested in throat singing from Tuvra Mongolia <laughs> um, and also throat singing from uh, the Inuit and Chukchi traditions and then just got interested in all sorts of other extended vocal technique a big part of my practice and what my PhD was focused on was sort of an idea of giving voice to the extra normal self. So parts of the self that aren't normally present, spirits or demons, or you can frame it as different aspects of yourself. And also I'm a chaos magician and do lots of sort of possession channeling ritual. <laughs> in some, some ways the simplest, most transparent kind of music there is, because you just, you're making it up, you're sort of finding stuff as you go. The barriers between audience and performer are less strict. Like in some sense it's really accessible music, like anyone can do it if you just listen and start making some sounds in some way. Obviously some people put a lot of technical practice into their 
improvising, but it's not uh, essential. So I think that might be more the case. Um, but in terms of improvised music, which is mostly my practice, um, yeah, it's really diverse and inclusive. And some people might be quite intellectual about it, but other people not at all. And there's not like a hierarchy there. Yeah, lots of people uh, with improvised music um, kind of don't get it. I met a lot of people who kind of didn't get it until they had listened for a while and then are like, oh, right, yeah, yeah, just making it up. <laughs> like, yeah, just the inertia of, you know, pop music or, you know, whatever it is people are listening to that dominate our society. Um, the people who are involved in organising stuff in Perth really care about that stuff and put that at the forefront of their kind of agenda. I think we're really lucky that um, a lot of the people booking shows and um, programming have actually thought about this stuff and, you know, take feedback on board and actually really care about, yeah, such things. My name is Eduardo, I am a musician. I also organize Outcome Unknown. It's been happening once a month for the last four or five years. Local musicians present work, work in progress, work that is improvised, artists that present uh, things with movement or um, spoken word. At any Outcome Unknown you will see uh, established artists playing alongside emerging ones. For me it's more about uh, connecting people and artists and audiences. So it really like the, the remit is, is really, really broad. I think the friendliness and the sense of community about the Perth sort of experimental scene, yeah, it's definitely one of the top things about it. Um, in Perth, the music scene, the experimental music scene here is so, so cute and community minded. Definitely the inclusivity and the friendliness and the sense of community um, about Perth is really amazing and fantastic and inspiring. If you go to a gig in Perth, you can definitely just meet the musician that just performed like, and you can talk to them and it's about like community and, and talking to people and making these relationships. Come to some shows and have a good time and just chat to some people. Uh, we're a really friendly bunch um, and if somebody doesn't walk over to you and introduce themselves because you're a new face um, please just come and say hi to whoever's running the show or someone who is playing or just someone in the audience and say oh, I'm new um, I don't get it or like, how do I be involved um, yeah but if you want to be involved it's really easy just ask and someone will hook you up with someone else or put you on a bill and it'll be lovely <laughs> <laughs>